I don't know about you, but I'm finding the nights a lot colder and the days are definitely getting shorter. So I think it's time to take a look at the tiny tropical garden in full leaf and in late summer bloom before I have to start doing some of the autumn and winter tasks. The raised bed looks great with the giant leaves of colocasia against all of the colours and textures behind it. I think the plant combinations in the tiny tropical garden are much better than last year's. With Persicaria, Coleus and Alphdemeria and even Dahlia all pulling colours from one plant into another and it just helps to bring the whole scheme together. Big jungly leaves from exotic plants are one of the key design elements in a tropical styled garden and this Colocasia Esculanta does not disappoint. I did an experiment, that was the leaves in full sun and this is another plant in dappled shade. Surprisingly it grows much bigger in full sun and I will note this for next year. I think the trick is just to give it plenty of water and the Selenum lacinatum or kangaroo apple which has grown from a seedling I purchased earlier in the year has grown so big so quickly and is producing flowers and tiny little fruit so I'll be able to grow seedlings next year. This was the first year that I've grown dahlias in my garden and I'm really happy with how they look especially this one Dahlia Bishop of Lambert. I think I'm going to lift and store the tubers dry and this is just so that I can divide the tubers in spring and take cuttings from the growing points. That way I'll have plenty of dahlia plants to share. I've still got everything crossed, hoping that my gingers will flower. But as the weather gets cooler, their time is running out. But luckily the foliage looks good on its own. And this is Hedicium tara and Hedicium gardenarium. One that did flower relatively early was the Hedicium greenii and as I've told you before it's one of my favourite plants in the garden and I'll be sure to divide this as well in spring so that I've got plenty of new plants. My Hedicium Dr Moy or variegated Hedicium doesn't seem to be flowering this year either but perhaps I'm just being impatient but the variegation does look really good next to the white trumpet blooms of Nicotiana sylvestris. This has always been a great plant for me, for getting pollinators into the garden, especially night pollinators like moths. But I think I'll put it in a different part of the garden next year because it just stands out too much in this raised bed and the leaves get quite big and cover everything else beneath them. The coleus plants that I grew from cuttings at the start of the year have grown to fill out their spaces really well and they're just such a useful plant to fill gaps. So I'm going to do a video after this one teaching you how to take cuttings and that way you'll have plenty of plants for next year. Beside the coleus I've been growing these Eucomis bicolor or pineapple lily and they're one of my favourite bulbs in the garden and apparently you can multiply your stock of these plants by taking leaf cuttings so I'll also do a tutorial video on how to propagate Eucomis from leaf cuttings. Though it was slow to start the Amaranthus love life bleeding has really added a tropical look to the raised bed. I'm not 100% happy with where I place them in the raised bed. I'll grow them again next year, but I think I'll place them behind a flower of a similar colour. The variegated hebe that I grow as an evergreen edging plant to the raised bed has filled out nicely, and I'll be taking cuttings from this again, ready to have new plants for spring. The serrated edges of the foliage of my Ligularia the Rocket continue to look tropical even after the flower is gone. This one can stay. As can my Canary Island Pot Club or Isoplexus canariensis. This is actually evergreen, so it will continue to add structure and foliage to the bed throughout winter. One plant that is leaving the tiny tropical garden is this Musa Bizju banana. They are a staple for many tropical gardens but they just get too big for my space. And I want to put in something evergreen that looks good year round. So I'm going to plant this Roldana and hopefully those leaves will recover from the pest damage. 
At the start of the year, I also added a cutting of a sweet edible grape, and the vine has worked its way up a bamboo cane, and eventually I'll train it across the wall, but its growth rate has really slowed down, so I think this might be it for this year. Beside the grapevine, we've planted an evergreen backdrop to the bed, because at this time last year, whilst all the herbaceous stuff was cut back and hit by frost, the bed was completely empty. So combining magnolia, fatsia and grisolinia, we've got a nice, glossy evergreen backdrop. And each of the evergreens has a different leaf colour or leaf shape, so it keeps that interest going throughout the year, which is something I really want to achieve in my tropical garden. These will also add height throughout the year as they establish, much like this Paulonia tormentosa, which I coppiced at the start of the year, and just look how big it got. It was great for adding quick height and massive, massive exotic leaves, but it's so delicate and got absolutely ripped to shreds in the wind. I'm gonna let it establish multiple branches next year and the leaves it puts out shouldn't be so big, and we'll see if it withstands the wind a bit better then. I grew these cannas last year and managed to divide the tubers to get multiple plants to grow this year. And the flowers are just so good and so intense for this time of the year. And they work really well with the dark foliage. So I'm gonna be sure to lift these cannas and divide the tubers as they start to grow in the spring next year. And again, I'll be sure to do a tutorial video. The plants I have streamside have been okay. They've bloomed on and off throughout the year, but I just feel it looks a little bit tatty. I wanted the stream to look natural, and it's definitely achieved that, but I'd like more flowers and more structure throughout the year, so I'm going to tweak this next season. Perhaps adding grasses, ferns, or hostas. Who knows? Next year, I get to play around with it. I am happy with these cedar now. And the heuchera and hosta planted at the base of them have been great for the shady spots. And finally, our plants are getting big enough that my sunny south-facing garden has some shade. That streptocarpus is still in its 9cm pot and I'm going to be doing leaf lamina cuttings on that and stem tip cuttings on this erythemum. Early September is a perfect time of the year to take stock of your garden and see which plants you want to try and propagate so that you can have them ready for next year's planting. Most of mine have grown from cuttings of plants that I grew last year. It's really a great way of saving money. I added this lovely blue leaf toaster to the garden this year, and it's a cultivar called Big Daddy. But I've got to say, I'm underwhelmed because it isn't huge, and I'm worried that when I lift the Entefi banana, I'm going to disturb the hosta, so I might move it next year. This Colocasia Esculanta Blue Hawaii only came into the tiny tropical garden last week, but I'm definitely going to keep it, so it's going to need protection over winter, either in leaf indoors or store it dry and let it reshoot next year. And my carnivorous Saracenia plants have succumbed to the cold. They've got absolutely toasted and they're dropping their pictures. But the little plant is trying to put up some new pictures, so we'll see if any new ones emerge, but it's quite late in the year. The surface of the pot that we used to hide the base of our washing line is starting to fill out with succulents and creeping time nicely. My wife has suggested using something that looks more natural to do this. But when I ask her what she'd like, she's not sure. So we'll see if this feature changes next year. But the succulent bed beside it definitely will change next year. Where I've been growing smaller succulents, the blackbirds have been digging them up, tossing them around, looking for vine weevil and worms, which is great. It's organic pest control, but it's not letting the succulents grow healthily. Next year, I'll be putting in bigger succulents that the birds won't be able to throw around. By planting this tree in the ground, I've set this young Eriobatria japonica, or loquat tree, free, and it's rewarding me with lots of growth, and it's going to be a great evergreen tree for structure in winter. And behind it is the really jungly looking leaves of my Roost Typhinia. So many people get nervous about planting this tree because it produces root suckers, but I couldn't be without it. Just look how great and tropical this foliage looks. 
and it's really hardy. It's been in the same wind as that Paulonia and this one is pristine. I love it and it's going to help produce a canopy really quickly. All of the begonias I've added to the garden this year seem quite happy and I can't take any credit for the begonia luxuriance because I almost killed it and it recovered itself. They are all very small at the moment but hopefully they're hardy enough to get through the winter and the ones that aren't I will lift and protect. But I'm told this begonia, Angel Blush, is hardy and I just love its metallic pinky leaves and I'm going to leave this one out and fingers crossed it comes back next year. Salvias were a new addition to my tiny tropical garden this year and I've fallen in love with them. They are grown from cuttings really easily and they flower all summer right up until the first frost. This salvia amistad is putting out its second flush of flowers as is this rose and this one is aloe house. In time it will ramble all the way up the post. And this was, in my opinion, a risky addition to the tropical garden, but the colours work and my wife loves roses, so I'm in the good books. This podophyllum, Spotty Dotty, didn't grow as much as I was hoping, but it seems happy here, so I'll leave it be. This colocasia was new to the garden this year and was given to me by a friend who grew it from seed. It's Thai giant and for its first year from seed, Look how ridiculously big the leaves are getting. Now, this one's going to need protection over winter. And if I can get it through, as I said before, the leaves are going to get enormous. Having seen how much growth my loquat tree put on after being planted in the ground, I'm going to do the same with this, my Shetlera Taiwaniana, and just see how big it gets next year. The variegated Orindodonax has been a really easy plant. You just cut it back and it puts on so much growth to add height to the back of your borders. And it sounds really nice as the wind rustles through it. But the growth the variegated one put on is nothing compared to the regular Orindodonax, which has got ridiculously tall in one season. It is starting to creep in the bed though, so I'm going to have to take a spade to the roots just to keep it under control. But this giant is a beauty. And every time the spider's web factia puts out a new flush of leaves, I'm treated to this white colour, which is doing exactly what we hoped and brightening up the dark, far corner of the bed. I'd recommend this plant to anybody that likes to grow factias. My Woodwardia radicans fern doesn't seem that happy this year and I'm not entirely sure what it is but the leaves are just anemic and undersized. I'm going to lift it and give it to a friend of mine and see if it gets happier in their garden because I really don't have the space for it in mine. And I love the colour of this Persicaria red dragon but I'm going to reduce the amount of it I have in my garden next year. And my variegated fatia has put on a lot of growth again after being planted in the ground and released from its pot and it actually looks like it's going to branch out next year so it could get enormous and I'll soon be ducking underneath it. But the variegation on the leaves of the fatia just complement the variegated leaves of my farfugium really well and this is again one of my favourite plants in the garden. I think the slugs love it just as much as me. This was a tiny division of someone else's plant at the start of the year and it's already forming a nice clump and I should be able to divide it soon, hopefully by next spring. Beside that is my Canna Cleopatra, which I don't think is going to flower this year, but just look how nice the patina on the leaves is, with these dark purple stripes working their way up. Hopefully I can divide its rhizomes and have more and more of this plant as the years go by. And I've had a love-hate relationship with this Euphorbia this year. I love its leaves and flowers, but I hate how big it got. But luckily it's recovering from the hard shop well, and I think in the coming weeks I can cut off the last remaining tall shoots and let it form as a new smaller shrub. I've fallen in love with my golden Indian bean tree this year, and it's not just me. Everybody that visits the garden asks what it is, and it's Catulpa bignoides, aurea. 
I'm just going to let this one grow as big as possible and enjoy these leaves and hopefully flowers at some point in the future. The first Fatsia that I put in the garden is the regular Fatsia japonica and that's getting enormous and its leaves complement the Tetrapanax papyrifa or T-Rex planted next to it which was grown from a plug spring last year. And though the leaves aren't enormous, they're pretty impressive and I think it's going to grow away fast next year. So as the heat of summer fades away and the daylight hours get shorter, the garden is starting to slow, but it's really looking nice and lush and tropical at the moment. For me, it's the time of the year to sit down and appreciate what I've achieved in my space and I think you should do the same definitely before you start lifting the plants and taking cuttings and preparing things for winter it's important to enjoy your hard work and if you enjoyed this video please hit subscribe comment below if you've got any tips or questions and i'll see you all next week thank you so much for watching